In mathematics, specifically in the field of finite group theory, the Solo theorems are a collection of theorems named after the Norwegian mathematician Ludvig Solo that give detailed information about the number of subgroups of fixed order that a given finite group contains. For a prime number p, a solo p subgroup of a group G is a maximal p subgroup of G, i.e., a subgroup of G that is a p group that is not a proper subgroup of any other p subgroup of G. The set of all solo p subgroups for a given prime p is sometimes written SYLP. The solo theorems assert a partial converse to Lagrange's theorem. While Lagrange's theorem states that for any finite group G the order of every subgroup of G divides the order of G, the solo theorems state that for every prime factor P of the order of a finite group G, there exists a solo P subgroup of G. The order of a solo P subgroup of a finite group G is Pn, where n is the multiplicity of P in the order of G and every subgroup of order Pn is a solo P subgroup of G. The solo P subgroups of a group are conjugate to each other. The number of solo P subgroups of a group for a given prime P is congruent to 1 mod P. Theorems Collections of subgroups that are each maximal in one sense or another are common in group theory. The surprising result here is that in the case of SYLP, all members are actually isomorphic to each other and have the largest possible order. If G equals Pn M with N greater than 0 where P does not divide M, then every solo P subgroup P has order P equals Pn. That is, P is a P group and G C D equals 1. These properties can be exploited to further analyze the structure of G. The following theorems were first proposed and proven by Ludwig Solow in 1872 and published in Mathematische Analen. Theorem 1. For every prime factor P with multiplicity N of the order of a finite group G, there exists a solo P subgroup of G of order Pn. The following weaker version of Theorem 1 was first proved by Cauchy, and is known as Cauchy's Theorem. Corollary. Given a finite group G and a prime number P dividing the order of G, then there exists an element of order P and G. Theorem 2. Given a finite group G and a prime number P, all solo P subgroups of G are conjugate to each other, i.e., if H and K are solo P subgroups of G, then there exists an element G and G with G minus 1 H G equals K. Theorem 3. Let P be a prime factor with multiplicity N of the order of a finite group G, so that the order of G can be written as P N M, where N greater than 0 and P does not divide M. Let N P be the number of solo P subgroups of G. Then the following hold. N P divides M, which is the index of the solo P subgroup in G. N P 1 mod P. N P equals G. Eng, where P is any solo P subgroup of G and Eng denotes the normalizer. Consequences The solo theorems imply that for a prime number P every solo P subgroup is of the same order, Pn. Conversely, if a subgroup has order Pn, then it is a solo P subgroup and so is isomorphic to every other solo P subgroup. Due to the maximality condition, if H is any P subgroup of G, then H is a subgroup of AP subgroup of order Pn. A very important consequence of theorem 2 is that the condition NP equals 1 is equivalent to saying that the solo P subgroup of G is a normal subgroup. Solo theorems for infinite groups There is an analog of the solo theorems for infinite groups. We define a solo P subgroup in an infinite group to be a P subgroup that is maximal for inclusion among all P subgroups in the group. Such subgroups exist by Zorn's lemma. Theorem. If K is a solo P subgroup of G, and NP equals CL is finite, then every solo P subgroup is conjugate to K, and NP1 mod P, where CL denotes the conjugacy class of K. Examples. A simple illustration of Solow subgroups and the Solow theorems are the dihedral group of the n-gon, d2n. For n odd, 2 equals 21 is the highest power of 2 dividing the order, and thus subgroups of order 2 are Solow subgroups. 
These are the groups generated by a reflection, of which there are n, and they are all conjugate under rotations. Geometrically the axes of symmetry pass through a vertex and a side. By contrast, if n is even, then 4 divides the order of the group, and the subgroups of order 2 are no longer solo subgroups. And in fact they fall into two conjugacy classes, geometrically according to whether they pass through two vertices or two faces. These are related by an outer automorphism, which can be represented by rotation through pi n, half the minimal rotation in the dihedral group. Example applications. Since Salo's theorem ensures the existence of p subgroups of a finite group, it's worthwhile to study groups of prime power order more closely. Most of the examples use Salo's theorem to prove that a group of a particular order is not simple. For groups of smaller order, the congruence condition of Salo's theorem is often sufficient to force the existence of a normal subgroup. Example 1. Groups of order p, q, p and q primes with p less than q. Example 2. Group of order 30, groups of order 20, groups of order p2, q, p and q distinct primes are some of the applications. Example 3. If O equals 60 and G has more than one solo 5 subgroups, then G is simple. Cyclic group orders some numbers n are such that every group of order n is cyclic. One can show that n equals 15 is such a number using the solo theorems. Let G be a group of order 15 equals 3 5 and n 3 be the number of solo 3 subgroups. Then n 3 5 and n 3 1. The only value satisfying these constraints is 1, therefore, there is only one subgroup of order 3, and it must be normal. Similarly, n5 must divide 3, and n5 must equal 1, thus it must also have a single normal subgroup of order 5. Since 3 and 5 are co-prime, the intersection of these two subgroups is trivial, and so g must be the internal direct product of groups of order 3 and 5, that is the cyclic group of order 15. Thus, there is only one group of order 15. Small groups are not simple. A more complex example involves the order of the smallest simple group that is not cyclic. Burnside's par QB theorem states that if the order of a group is the product of one or two prime powers, then it is solvable. And so the group is not simple, or is of prime order and is cyclic. This rules out every group up to order 30. If g is simple, and g equals 30, then n3 must divide 10, and n3 must equal 1. Therefore, n3 equals 10, since neither 4 nor 7 divides 10, and if n3 equals 1 then, as above, g would have a normal subgroup of order 3, and could not be simple. g then has 10 distinct cyclic subgroups of order 3, each of which has two elements of order 3. This means G has at least 20 distinct elements of order 3. As well, N5 equals 6, since N5 must divide 6, and N5 must equal 1. So G also has 24 distinct elements of order 5. But the order of G is only 30, so a simple group of order 30 cannot exist. Next, suppose G equals 42 equals 2, 3, 7. Here N7 must divide 6 and N7 must equal 1, so N7 equals 1. So, as before, G cannot be simple. On the other hand, 4, G equals 60 equals 22, 3, 5, then N3 equals 10 and N5 equals 6 is perfectly possible. And in fact, the smallest simple non-cyclic group is A5, the alternating group group over five elements. It has order 60, and has 24 cyclic permutations of order 5, and 20 of order 3. Wilson's theorem Part of Wilson's theorem states that for every prime p, one may easily prove this theorem by Salo's third theorem. Indeed, observe that the number np of Salo's p subgroups in the symmetric group sp is, on the other hand, np1 mod p. Hence, 1 mod p, 
So, minus 1 mod p, fusion results Fratini's argument shows that a solo subgroup of a normal subgroup provides a factorization of a finite group. A slight generalization known as Burnside's fusion theorem states that if G is a finite group with solo p subgroup p and two subsets A and B, normalized by p, then A and B are G conjugate if and only if they are N conjugate. The proof is a simple application of Solow's theorem. If B equals AG, then the normalizer of B contains not only P but also PG. By Solow's theorem P and PG are conjugate not only in G, but in the normalizer of B. Hence GH minus 1 normalizes P for some H that normalizes B, and then R minus 1 equals BH minus 1 equals B, so that A and B are N conjugate. Burnside's fusion theorem can be used to give a more powerful factorization called a semi-direct product. If G is a finite group whose solo P subgroup P is contained in the center of its normalizer, then G has a normal subgroup K of order co prime to P. G equals P K and P K equals 1, that is, G is P nilpotent. Less trivial applications of the Solow theorems include the focal subgroup theorem, which studies the control a Solow P subgroup of the derived subgroup has on the structure of the entire group. This control is exploited at several stages of the classification of finite simple groups, and for instance defines the case divisions used in the alperin bragg orenstein theorem classifying finite simple groups whose Solow 2 subgroup is a quasi-dihedral group. These rely on J. L. Alperin's strengthening of the conjugacy portion of Solow's theorem to control what sorts of elements are used in the conjugation. Proof of the Solow theorems The Solow theorems have been proved in a number of ways, and the history of the proofs themselves are the subject of many papers including, and to some extent, one proof of the Solow theorems exploits the notion of group action in various creative ways. The group G acts on itself or on the set of its P subgroups in various ways, and each such action can be exploited to prove one of the Solow theorems. The following proofs are based on combinatorial arguments of, in the following, we use A, B as notation for, A divides B, and A B for the negation of this statement. Theorem 1. A finite group G whose order G is divisible by a prime power PK has a subgroup of order PK. Proof. Let G equals PKM equals PK plus Rho such that P does not divide U, and let omega denote the set of subsets of G of size PK. G acts on omega by left multiplication. The orbits g omega equals g omega g g of the omega omega of the equivalence classes under the action of g. For any omega omega consider its stabilizer subgroup g omega equals g g g omega equals omega. For any fixed element alpha omega the function g g alpha maps g omega to omega injectively. For any 2g, hg omega we have that g alpha equals h alpha implies g equals h, because alpha omega g means that one may cancel on the right. Therefore, pk equals omega g omega. On the other hand, a no power of p remains in any of the factors inside the product on the right. Hence nu p equals nu p equals r. Let r omega be a complete representation of all the equivalence classes under the action of g. Then, thus, there exists an element omega r such that s equals nu p nu p equals r. Hence, g omega equals p s v where p does not divide v. By the stabilizer orbit theorem we have g omega equals g g omega equals pk plus r to v. Therefore, pk g omega, so pk g omega and g omega is the desired subgroup. Lemma. Let g be a finite p group, let g act on a finite set omega, and let omega zero denote the set of points of omega that are fixed under the action of g. Then, omega, omega zero, mod p, 
Proof. Right omega as a disjoint sum of its orbits under G. Any element x omega not fixed by G will lie in an orbit of order G, Gx, which is a multiple of P by assumption. The result follows immediately. Theorem 2. If H is a P subgroup of G and P is a solo P subgroup of G, then there exists an element G in G such that G minus 1 HGP. In particular, all solo P subgroups are G are conjugate to each other, i.e., if H and K are solo P subgroups are G, then there exists an element G in G with G minus 1 HG equals K. Proof. Let omega be the set of left co-sets of P and G and let H act on omega by left multiplication. Applying the lemma to H on omega, we see that omega 0, omega, equals G, P, mod P. Now P, G, P, by definition so P, omega 0, hence in particular, omega 0, 0 so there exists some G P omega 0. It follows that for some G G and H H we have H G P equals G P so G minus 1 H G P equals P and therefore G minus 1 H G P. Now if H is a solo P subgroup H equals P equals G P G minus 1 so that H equals G P G minus 1 for some G G. Theorem 3. Let Q denote the order of any solo P subgroup of a finite group G. Then N P, G, Q and N P 1 mod P. Proof. By Theorem 2, N P equals G. Eng, where P is any such subgroup, and Eng denotes the normalizer of P and G, so this number is a divisor of G, Q. Let omega be the set of all solo P subgroups of G, and let P act on omega by conjugation. Let Q omega 0 and observe that then Q equals X Q X minus 1 for all X P so that P Eng. By theorem 2, P and Q are conjugate in Eng in particular, and Q is normal in Eng, so then P equals Q. It follows that omega 0 equals P, so that, by the lemma, omega, omega 0, equals 1 mod P. Algorithms the problem of finding a solo subgroup of a given group is an important problem in computational group theory. One proof of the existence of solo P subgroups is constructive. If H is a P subgroup of G and the index G H is divisible by P, then the normalizer N e equals N of H and G is also such that N H is divisible by P. In other words, a polycyclic generating system of a solo P subgroup can be found by starting from any P subgroup H and taking elements of P power order contained in the normalizer of H but not in H itself. The algorithmic version of this is described in textbook 4min, including the algorithm described in these versions are still used in the gap computer algebra system. In permutation groups, it has been proven in that a solo P subgroup and its normalizer can be found in polynomial time of the input. These algorithms are described in textbook form in, and are now becoming practical as the constructive recognition of finite simple groups becomes a reality. In particular, versions of this algorithm are used in the magma computer algebra system.